It is your life. Nobody else can tell you what's best for you and only you will have to deal with the consequences. So make your own decisions. Start trimming your friend group and start adding to your friend group predicated on what you want to be. We all, we all have that one negative person that complains, complains, complains about the shitty situation they're in while, while doing absolutely nothing to rectify it. They often do this as a sort of denial of responsibility. If you're not trying to get out of your shitty situation, then every day you're choosing to stay in it. And you can't complain about being given the choice you keep making. Please, for the love of God, stop burdening everybody around you with your own self-pity because all you're doing is adding pointless negative energy to a world that already has enough of it. And you'll find that you're dragging everybody around you down with you. The prerequisite for spending time with any person is that they nourish and inspire you. They feed your flame. There's been very few times in my life that I looked left or looked right and didn't find a person who believed and supported me. From Jazzy Jeff to Alfonso Ribeiro to, to Charlie Mack to Jada, like there's always been a person beside me fanning my flames. Look at your last five text messages. Are those people feeding your flames or dousing your fire? People are keeping very negative people around them and if they aspire to change their situation, it's imperative to audit the seven to 10 people that are around you. Put your phone down for just a second and look around. Look to the people around you. Are those people throwing logs on your fire or are they pissing on it? The people that you spend time with are gonna make or break your dreams. Everybody don't deserve to be around you. You gotta defend your light with your life. So who are the people in your life that are fanning your flames? Complaining causes negativity, which causes you to complain, which causes negativity. And there are a few actionable things you can do to immediately stop this negative cycle and to break out of it. And the first one is actually just changing your perception. You know, if you can't change it, then at least change the way you think about it. Someone said, um, the brain doesn't just observe the world, it projects a second story over everything we see. That story is our perception. We can complain rose bushes have thorns, or we can rejoice that thorn bushes have roses. Perception defines everyone's reality. The second thing is about in your internal locus of control. Take responsibility. If you don't take responsibility, then you're choosing to be a victim of circumstance. And this victim mindset dilutes human potential. It kills action. And by not accepting personal responsibility for your own circumstances, you're greatly reducing the power you have to change it. The rise of social media, connectivity and the internet has created new problems for this new generation. Your life is now public. Everybody knows your business and therefore everybody, unfortunately, has an opinion on it. It's now harder than ever to break away from the crowd without the crowd questioning or criticizing your decision to do so. Here's the thing. The world we live in isn't real. Social media isn't real. And by design, social media rewards us for showing our best life. The edited, posed, champagne, Michelin star, holiday, orchestrated best angle of our life. The highlight reel. But you don't ever see real life. The 99% of our lives. The behind the scenes, the unglamorous, unfiltered, day-to-day, -day, bland normality and you end up comparing your behind the scenes to other people's fake highlight reel and using others as a mirror or benchmark for how you should look, how successful you should be, or how you should live. These fake comparisons will only serve to make you feel inadequate and inferior to something that isn't even real. Let's face it, it is human nature to want to be liked, loved, and accepted. 
However, if you worry too much about the opinion of others, you run the real risk of being held hostage and through fear, never becoming the person you were supposed to be. And nothing scares me more than the thought that something so insignificant could have such a significant impact over someone's life. You can't please all of the people all of the time. It is impossible to live up to everyone's expectations and in doing so, you'll fail to please the most important person of all, yourself. And the reality is people usually don't care as much about you as they might let on. There's a famous quote that says, we would worry less about what other people think of us if we realized how rarely they do. As humans, we tend to live our life through our own ego and unless something directly impacts us, we don't care about it as much as we pretend to. So it's time to stop caring about what others think because they probably don't care that much anyway. Once you give up catering to other people's opinions, you will find your own happiness and discover who you truly are. Worry, why are you shitting yourself? A lot of the time that shitting themselves bit has come from parental pressures and that their friends, people around them knowing exactly what they want to do, but it's completely fine at the age of 21 or 22 to not have a fucking clue what you want to do. The reality is most people don't. Even those who do are about to find out that maybe they didn't either. So the important thing is to, to, to chill, to relax, and relieve yourself of that worry because it's only going to force you into a decision that you're going to spend the next 10 years regretting when you get that shithole job your parents told you you should get because you need to get a job right now. The next point is about broadening your horizons, right? A lot of people, they think that they have one, maybe two, maybe three options based on whatever, whatever degree they did. Don't, we all do bullshit degrees, right? I did, you know, business with Chinese, right? And I dropped, before I dropped out, you can do fucking anything. Don't let your degree, don't let your way you live, don't let your, your, your mind, more importantly, hold you back, okay? You can do fucking anything. If you want to go and work in a recording studio in America, you can do that. If you want to start a business, you can do that too. If you want to start a band, you can do that too. You're in this period of your life where you have absolutely nothing to lose. You're at the bottom, okay? Let's face it, you're at the bottom. At 21 years old, you're at the bottom. You can roll the dice, and if you get a bad hand, you're still at the bottom. But if you roll the dice, take a risk now and get a good hand, you might set yourself on the trajectory to achieve everything you've ever wanted to, right? A famous Australian nurse interviewed people as they laid on their deathbed, and she found that the single most common regret of the dying was wishing they had the courage to live a life true to themselves and not the life that others expected of them. Because when people realise that their life is almost over and look back on it, I imagine they have a retrospective clarity that only exists in that precious moment. I imagine everything pales into insignificance and only that which truly matters is able to remain on the mind. Most people had not honoured even half of their dreams at that stage and they had to die knowing that it was due to choices they had made or not made or due to fear of the opinion of others that they had done so. Hindsight, there's this thing called hindsight bias where you look back and you connect the dots and you come up with a bullshit story as to how it all happened. You know, I, I, one of my favorite quotes is, um, change happens when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of making a change. And I, I really do believe that. So when I, when I hear people complain, I, I'm knowing they're not changing it, I think maybe it's not hurting them enough for them to fight to get out. There are two primary choices we all make in life. It is to accept conditions as they are, or to accept the responsibility for changing them. Please choose the latter. And the last one, which is the most important of all, is making a change. Einstein said, as we all know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. And for every action, we have a reaction. If you want a new reaction, you must perform a new action. I found in my life that change starts with a big decision and a tiny step. Today, right now, yesterday, was the time to make that decision. It's time to take that step. 90% of you guys that are watching this right now will think about something you wanna do and 90% of you will never ever do something about it. You just won't believe in yourself enough. Because we're all conditioned with these two stories, right? One story comes from people who couldn't and didn't think they could. And that story is that you can't and that you shouldn't try and if you do try, then you're gonna lose and you're gonna let your family down and you're gonna be a failure. The truth is, and this is the truth, coming from a kid that didn't know sh didn't know how to be an entrepreneur, didn't know how to build a website, didn't know how to persuade people and just tried it and persisted in failing until he did. The truth is, you can.
those that believe try and those that try learn and those that learn can you already have all the tools you need to live your dream the simple answer is i just started i didn't know what the f i was doing i persisted when it got really really hard and along the way i learned to get and figured it out i implore you just to try and before you write how do i do it you must have tried because often trying alone is the single most important step to being able to